So there we go. I also swapped out my guns for the uh, Torg pistol. So my uh, assault rifle has been swapped out for a Torg pistol. Just gonna get this in. And we got a Vladov uh, Rocketeer, which is also cool. So let's accept that. And now we have two more. And I'll get that right over here. If you survive out here for any length of time, you'll need a better shield. I humbly suggest paying a visit to the old Crimson Raider safe house. You'll need to take the elevator up. And we can find an extra shield over there if we want to. That's another side quest. So the Thor guns actually have slow moving projectiles, but they're explosive. So they have a bit of an area of effect to them as well, which is what Torque is all about. Explosions. So let's grab Claptrap and move back down, well, further down the mountain. So there we go. That's our next objective. We're gonna... Okay, there he is. My first mate, Boom Boom, is gonna kill ya. Jack's gonna pay us. And I'm gonna play hopscotch in your chest cavity. That's a bit much. Now be careful taking down Boom Boom. He's one of the rip. And there we go. That's the problem with having too much conversation. Sometimes it skips over a few things. But this is funny. So, Jack bought the pony made of diamonds. Because he's rich. So Jack, Jack is probably considered one of the the best villains in any game, period. Um, okay, he just kind of ducked out of the way. Thank you, goodbye. I'm just doing some uh, preliminary killing. Uh, Claptrap is running ahead, which I don't mind. Which I really don't mind, because at least he's getting out of my way then. So let's go down here and shoot up some bandits, because they're going to spawn out of the woodworks. There they go. So the problem with those slow moving... Oh, gold. Okay, yeah, this is going to happen. There we go. So if you die in Borderlands, you actually get the chance to... I don't know. There we go. If you kill something when you're dead, you actually get the opportunity to do a second wind. If you kill something while you're down, but then I don't know why this gun... It fires all over the place. This is not as good as I intended. So yeah, the basic guns are really crap. So the, the accuracy is... I mean, I'm aiming at the guy. Yes, screw those guys. So, first things first, these are the audio diaries I was talking about. But let's have Jack talk about first. You know what, if you've seen Tales from the Borderlands, you know that the Diamond Pony is actually called Butt Stallion, so he's not going to change his mind about that one, but audio diary. We've hijacked the train that runs through the dust. If all goes well, we should get to Sanctuary in a day's time. Hyperion hasn't diverted any troops from New Haven to pursue us, and a sandstorm has devoured their nearest frontier town. We just did Oh, damn it! Everyone, get away from the windows! <laughs> So there we go. That's the first piece you of the of story. <laughs> she was a lieutenant in the Crimson Raiders, the anti-Hyperion resistance. I'd be very interested to know what became of her. If you could find the rest of those audio logs, I would be more than happy to pay you for them. Okay, so there we have it. Ha Ham Hammerlock is uh, really interested in finding out what happened to Helena. So Helena Pierce is a character from the first game. Not that fleshed out, but... Um, she still was there. She was kind of the leader of the resistance back then before Roland took over. And she kind of went missing. So I'm going to check out those audio logs first. The reason why I'm doing these first is because they actually give you a bit of a, an indication of how evil a man Handsome Jack really is. How cruel a man he actually is. So let's open up this log and there's another audio log. Doesn't belong to you, so why don't you turn around and face me, pumpkin? 
This train was commandeered legally under the... Holy nutballs! <laughs> what happened to your freaking face? So there we go. What happened to your face? Half his face is disfigured because of the war. But uh, yeah, Handsome Jack isn't really a nice guy about it. I thought the next one was going to be here, but it's on the roof. <laughs> so next one in a pile of ice on top of the roof of Hammerlock's oh, yeah. house. How about this, lady? I don't even know what to call you. You tell me why you look like you headbutted a belt sander and I'll let all of you go right now. <laughs> My husband gave me a skag pearl ring. The pearl released hunger-inducing pheromones. Oh, you know what? I am so sorry. I, I just, forgive me, but where's your husband now? He's dead. That is a heartbreaker, but you got something in common with him now, at least. So there we go. Kind of was wrong about the war thing, but the, the Skag Pearl kind of forgot about that. Um, so yeah, he just shot him in the face. So let's open up this thing as a final log. So there we go. He's a mass murderer. Jack killed her, did he? Shame. A real shame. Please return the echoes to me whenever you are capable of doing so. Um, I'm right here, buddy. There we go. So now we can choose which gun we actually want. We can either go for a lot of pistol with 50% melee damage and hmm, pretty good damage as well. Or another TDR. I'm gonna go for the Patriots Fighter for now. We're gonna go to TDR later on. I'm actually going to swap out that gun for the one I just got. There we go, the Patriots Fighter. It's lower on dam it's higher on damage. And as I said, better fire rate. Yes, a fire rate of 5.9 and extra melee damage. I'm going to keep the sniper rifle for now, I think. Although, you know what? We don't really need it for now. So let's just do that. And we're at level 4 with that. So moving on. So next up, I'm just going to go up there, which gives us the extra shield uh, and access to a few more uh, side quests in the process. Ones I really want to do before we head towards Captain Flynn and his gang. Although, of course, these are also just bandits, so uh, there we go. Higher fire rate. Marauder, I hardly knew her. Okay. Look, look. Hi, dude, 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 dude. There we go. Just hit him in the face. Did another one spawn? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, so this doesn't work. Of course, I forgot. The safe house power box stopped working after Claptrap attempted to integrate. That's so gross. Ah, uh, what a killer! Just get a new fuse from the elevator and ignore what he said about that power box. So yeah, um, Claptrap just tried to bone the yeah the, the power box there. That's a a horrifying thought. But uh, let's put a few more bandits over there and get that fuse. Finally, a grenade. Holy crap. Let's throw it immediately. I don't know where that's going. Oh, right. I have the fireworks equipped. So they're just jumping into that for some reason. So, as you can see, there's a lot of different enemy types, which is what I really like about this game. So you have marauders, which usually have a shield and are the bigger guys. Then you have the normal bandits. I think there's one, yeah, over here. Then you have the psychos, which actually just try to uh, hit you in the face. Uh, does that actually reach up there? It doesn't. So there's one more up there, but I can't really reach him. This gun sucks. It fires wildly and it consumes two bullets per pull. There it goes. There he goes. And now we have this electric fence. If we go on that electric fuse, that actually disables it. And then we get more bully monks. We do get more bully monks, so they're, they're a bit shy. But I don't I don't mind the experience. And I have a The downside to those explosive rounds is you don't get any um well, headshots. They're all just normal shots. I'm just gonna... There we go. More bandits have spawned as well, so I'm wondering if there's any... No, don't think behind me. Look at that. There we go, and then... He's just fighting more bully monks. 
And I think, yeah, the bandits usually win, of course, because they have range. Okay. Well, you die. Thank you. Okay, there we go. And then we get the fuse, for some reason, inside of a toilet. There we go. In the generator. Ooh, shields. Um, so shields also have a variety of stats. Um, if I, I think if I can equip this, that sounds like the better one. This one has a higher recharge rate and recharge delay. Well, lower recharge delay, but the shield capacity is a lot less. I'm just going to stay with that. You can see that the numbers are actually are higher when I'm equipping it. That's because of those bonus huh? statistics. And that gives me the extra shield capacity. Just a little bit of a percentage there, but every little bit helps. I'm just going to get this ammo and then just move away because we don't really need to be here just yet. Let's move up. So let's plug that in. Simply ascend to the safe house and buy a shield. This used to be a sizable hub for the resistance until everyone heard the Hyperion army approaching and fled to Sanctuary. There we go, a bit more uh, backstory about this place, the uh, resistance hub. And then let's check out the shop. I need to buy a shield here, which is a bit of annoying, a bit annoying because I don't really want to spend the cash on that. But let's just buy whatever is the cheapest. 167 seems to be the cheapest, so let's well buy that. Now, if you could to and then sell that back to him. There we go. And there's actually a hidden weapons chest here, but you need to do some fancy parkour, parkour to get there. So if you go up here onto this metal huh. ramp, you can actually huh. jump across huh. over here, if I'm not mistaken. Huh. Yeah, there we go. Move back in, and there's another <laughs> weapon crate. So weapon crates are things we actually need to look out for. Uh, grants immunity to burn damage, that would be nice. But 95 with 18 recharge rates. Sounds like the better deal. So, and let's get these. I'm just gonna sell those later on. So that's a weapon crate, and I think there's even... Yeah, there's the marker. A collectible. A collectible hidden vault symbol. So, one more thing I need to do, I'm gonna beat up some bully monks and then we'll head back to Hammerlock to finish up those side quests and go back to Claptrap. And we have our first badass enemy. So, uh, badass enemies usually drop great loot as well. And they are, well, tougher versions of existing enemies. Ah, I'm gonna have to kill him with my guns now. There we go. So they're fighting about who's gonna get the bully monk fur. There we go. So if you give it to Claptrap, you get a shotgun. If you give it to Hammerlock, you get a sniper rifle. So there we go. That's a choice for you if you want to, but I'm going to go for Hammerlock because I want another fancy sniper rifle. So moving back. So another thing gameplay wise that I find annoying is that there's no fast travel in this game aside from the spawn points. So if you're far away in the open wild, you need to walk back to where you were, which was what I'm doing right now for the past two minutes. Uh, and there's also no healing rege health regeneration. So if you're down to help, you're going to have to find either health packs or find a shield that actually has health generation. A brilliant thanks, Vault Hunter. You've helped a foolish old man look far more badass than he deserves. I'm referring to myself, of course. There we go. Bad hair day. We get a Jacob sniper rifle, which needs level 5. But I think if I pull, well, uh, bring in this quest, Protection I'm actually going oh! over it. Or not? Yeah, and then we have the symbiosis quest, which like is what I was looking for. Of course we will. Yes, please proceed to the southern shelf and defeat Midgemong for me. If the answer is no, you are sad, and I have no desire to speak with you further. So, not enough experience points just yet, but we'll get there. So moving back to where we found the fuse, you can actually go even further here. We can get into the harbor like this. I think there might be a few more bully monk spawns. No, okay. That's fine, because enemies respawns are actually pretty fast in this game. So I'm just going to go through the southern shelf bay. 
So as you might have noticed, I'm gonna, well, split this up into smaller episodes, so it's uh, kind of bite-sized. I'm just gonna heal up a bit, um, and then might as well sell those two shields and we're gonna keep going. So smaller episodes because I wanna just keep these things snippy. I'm not gonna try and deduce that while I'm recording. So this is gonna happen at editing time. So that might be why the uh, outros are a bit similar because I'm gonna have pre-recorded those as well. But for now, we're getting into an area that we're a bit under leveled for. I'm gonna try and get to level five as quickly as possible because that also gets us our uh, ability. The benefit of actually fighting enemies that are above your um, level is that you actually get a lot of extra experience from that. As you can see, in the experience part, there we go, we leveled up. And now we can actually unlock our action skill, which is what I'm going to do. So, action skills, you can pause this game, by the way. Uh, Deception is uh, Zero's action skill. So press L1 to create a holographic decoy and vanish for a few seconds. The longer you are invisible, the more damage your next attack deals. But ending invisibility sooner results in a shorter deception cooldown. So, for cooldown of 15, 15 seconds, melee damage goes up to 6.5 times what it was originally, and gun damage goes up to 200%, critical hit damage up to 250%. So, almost 4 times the amount of damage you would do if you wait until the very last second before your invisibility runs out. Then we have 3 uh, skill trees where you can choose from. Bloodshed is melee focused, cunning is a bit of both. Uh, more focused on the deception kind of bit. And then we have sniping is, well, it's based on the gunplay. So we're gonna go for both sniping and bloodshed first. Because um, I wanna go into the melee uh, tree first. Because uh, I've never really done that. And it seems like an interesting way of doing things. So here we go. Ow. So if we activate that, you actually see the hologram over there. There are no enemies at the moment, which is a bit silly. But if you fire now, that would be really, really high damage. You would uh, triple your output there. That's actually pretty good. Trigger is as fast, fires as fast as you can pull the trigger. I'm actually going to equip that. And the sniper rifle we got from Hammerlaw. There we go. So Jacobs, we haven't really talked about Jacobs yet. Uh, fast fire rate, as fast as you can pull the trigger. And you have really, really high base damage, but never any elemental effects, which is also interesting to take note of. I'm not going to go over there. That's a completely uh, optional area, aside from the fact that this is an optional area in itself. But this is kind of the harbor of uh, the uh, frosty place. Uh, you actually get a, a badass rank, I think, if you go across the rope instead of the elevator. There we go, Fold Hunter on a wire. We get a, another badass rank for that. And we don't need to pull the elevator back then. Uh, like that. So this side quest is called Symbiosis. We're gonna fight a midget by riding a Bullymong. So we know what a Bullymong is. Um, I'm guessing you know what a midget is. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. There we go, a shotgun midget. I'm just gonna do this uh, and then wait until the very last second and that actually increases the damage you actually do with that last shot there we go it's a bit harder to fire these things because they're not as accurate as normal guns Ooh, this is a really really zoomy gun so i think we're wielding two jacobs guns at the moment i'm gonna go with the pistol for now most of these side areas actually have extra side areas, so you have this kind of boat area to the side, which is actually completely optional on top of the optional stuff. Just gonna try and get... there we go. A headshot in. There we go. Just gonna let my shield come back, maybe even use the hologram. Focus on the midget. There we go. So that was a one-hit kill. It does hurt. It does hurt. Just admit that it does hurt. I'm gonna be careful with those explosives. So I think they're above me now. Um, we have a better shield. That's a better shield. And there's another green shield over here. It's gonna go down on... Oh. I'm trying not to hit the explosive barrel. 
there we go so just basic bandits for now nothing too shabby but we're heading towards the end of this area which is over here i think yeah ah god damn it as you can see totally not accurate i was aiming at his hat but for some reason that didn't really work oh crap the reload animation didn't end there assassins never die there we go the quick scoping in this game is uh heavy let's blow up some shit uh, and well, his uh, skill is actually really nice to actually get away for a second, like this. So they will start attacking the decoy instead, um, and you get your shield backs like this. There we go. I think there's yeah, there's one more over here. I'm just gonna move around a bit. There we go, and then let's reload. And I go into the decoy. The Preparing to strike. And there we go. Simple headshot taking him out. Uh, so that's the balance. I'm gonna have to be careful here because I know these enemies actually respawn rather quickly. So clearing up a few more bandits. We're getting close to our objective here. Oh, I hate this gun. I really need a replacement for this. Is it? It just fires wildly. So shotgun midgets are really dangerous because they do a lot of damage even though they, well, fall to their ass every time they shoot that gun. But uh, there we go. So if we go all the way up, we get this saloon kind of thing with this, uh, this indicator on top of it. And if we go closer, the door actually... Flies open, and we have Mitch Mong, which is actually a... Crap. The midget looks like a little person backpack. That's just, that's just weird, buddy. There we go, let's throw a few of those really overpowered grenades. Where the hell is he? Oh, there he is. I'm just gonna throw the decoy. There he is. And yeah, there we have that annoying respawning of the enemies. So let's use the decoy to our advantage. The problem is that this is a really moving target. And he has a lot of health. Ow. Oh crap, that's a problem. Yeah, I'm gonna die, I think. Unless there any, there's anything else fighting me. No, there's a Marauder over here, but he's too far away. Yeah, okay, that's our first death. Kind of blew myself up there. Completely my fault. So what happens when you die is you respawn, you lose a percentage of your money, and I don't think extra enemies spawn, but it's just that, yeah, everything kind of resets. We're pretty close to where we were. They do heal up. Oh, wow, that was in the face. So, yeah, so the boss is actually healed up. I don't know if this thing actually has a bolt. It's also armored all over the place, which is really annoying. I don't know if I kill, I must have defeated the, the midget already. Blown it up. Because the midgemong is actually... Oh, wow. Come on. Can you please die? There we go. I think I'm gonna... Try and medium next time. Couldn't get into reach fast enough there. Ah, got him in the face there. There we go. Just need to aim a bit lower. The annoying thing is that he now died over there. So there we go. We got all of that. And that's another gun. 
So I'm just gonna snipe this guy in the face from close range. Remember when you killed him? That was funny. There we go. Um, I'm gonna have to. Ooh. Where the hell is that coming from? It's coming from above and down here. You're not gonna make it? Indeed, you aren't. I'm just gonna run out now because I've kind of completed the quest and it's just gonna spawn more enemies. So I think I can actually just blow these good guys up. Oh, no, they can't. Let's just shoot him. So, every time we level up, we get a skill point that actually gives us the opportunity to upgrade one of our skills. So let's check that out right now in the middle of all of this. So we can choose between Killing Blow, massively increases melee damage against enemies with low health. Iron Hand increases your melee damage and maximum health by a little bit. Then we have Headshot, critical hit damage up by a little bit. And Optics increases your zoom with all gun types for a little bit. So I'm going to go for the extra melee damage on enemies with low health. That's going to come in handy. So that doubles up melee damage on enemies with low health. But that also stacks with the, um, the action skill. So if we do that while we're invisible, we even get a lot more damage out of that. So let's get back to Hammerlock and give him turn in the quest. So back at the Southern Shelf and Hammerlock's little village over here. Let's turn in that final side quest that we could do. You get a customization option for that, but mainly the experience is what I wanted to have here. So let's sell that customization thingy. Uh, I'm actually going to check out the weapons shop. So the guy you heard at the very beginning narrating the start of the story is actually also the gun salesman. So the voice you hear in the ammo and gun, gun shops gun, gun. is also Marcus. So that is that is basically that. There's no interesting guns here. So let's move back towards uh, Boom Boom, I think his name is. So let's head towards the bandit camp on the right there in that shipyard. Next time on Borderlands 2, we meet the Boom Brothers. Light the fuses, bitches! <laughs>